If you thought I had it out for KFC, <laughs> that was just the beginning. Okay, so today we're doing Jolly B Chicken Joy with a little bit of spaghetti versus mine. This is one of the more specialty places that's been requested numerous times. I have a lot of friends who love it and I've actually never had it. So I'm excited to put it in my mouth and masticate until I understand what the flavors are like so that I can then bust it wide open. I do this with respect and love and I understand this is a big part of culture in the Philippines. This is a big part of Filipino food and that this is also an homage towards that. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Yeah. Jolly Bee, this guy's blocking my way. Get the f out of my way. You know what I just realized the other day was Jolly Bee. It's a bee. Uh, first off, the, the, the building's amazing. Exterior, 10 out of 10. This is the best drive through I've ever been through. Hi, can I just get the Jolly Bee combo with spaghetti? I just need to do my cooking. Thank you. She was very nice. She did say good morning, which I appreciate. Thank you. Wow, that was fast. Okay, so menu, I love the chicken aspect. For variety, eight out of 10. Eh, seven out of 10. 7.72 out of 10. Service. Nine out of 10, only because they seem kind of sad. Have you ever had someone say good morning twice to you? That's how people get married. That's how babies are made. Let's go. We already threw the bag away. Oopsie. <laughs> First time having Jolly Bee Chicken. I did half spicy, half normal, although we're doing the normal version. Very sorry. If you want to make it spicy, I'll give you some alternatives. And then of course this spaghetti. I know that this is a big thing, all right? I want to be respectful, but this is a little weird. But hey, yeah. gravy, pretty good. All right, chicken. This is the spicy one, but I get the idea. Honestly, it's kind of good. I don't know if I can make fun of this. I want to eat this. This kicks KFC right in their KFPP. And then the normal one. <laughs> Me, it's good, damn it. I will say this is breaded a lot better. This is just like a flap of skin with no crisp. That aside, flavors there are really nice, straightforward. I'm gonna dip this in the gravy. Man, I get the hype, I really do. Now this on the other hand, why the f does this exist? It's so sweet. It tastes like Chef Boyardee. It's like unholy and kind of good at the same time. Like you walk into a room and you're like, whoa, whoa, kind of scary in here. There's demons and stuff. But then like all the demons like really nice and like super chill. Chicken's great. This is weird, but not, I, I don't, I wouldn't eat this personally. But can we make it better? I don't know. We gonna try. Right, this is a whole ass meal. So let's make this quick. Of course, we have our gravy, chicken, and well, the spaghetti, I guess. Sauces in many cases should go first because we wanna make sure that they feel loved. So first up, gravy. Medium saucepan down. Add in 10 cloves of peeled garlic. Cover with one cup or 240 milliliters of vegetable oil and set over medium low. Let that come up and lightly cook, swirling occasionally for five to seven minutes or until the garlic is golden brown and ultra soft. Strain the oil out, pastify your garlic by pressing with the flat side of your knife and continuously chopping until you get a nice, fine, well, paste. Separately in a medium saucepan, add two tablespoons or 28 grams of unsalted butter, two tablespoons or 28 grams of chicken fat, more vegetable oil, set to medium heat, and once that butter is melted and bubbling, add in four tablespoons or 43 grams of all-purpose flour and let that cook, stirring occasionally for about 45 seconds, then whisk in two cups or 480 milliliters of good chicken stock. Good stuff. Okay. Continuously stir until it begins to thicken to a nice gravy-like consistency. Adding chicken stock if it becomes a little too thicky, wicky. Anyway, once that's done, cut off the heat and season it with one to two tablespoons or 29 grams of silver swan soy sauce. Whisk in your confit garlic paste and salt to taste. Optionally, a little sprinkle MSG. Pass the whole thing through a fine mesh strainer and you have a lovely gravy. Now the only other sauce is the Jolly Bee tomato sauce. This one could be potentially a little bit different from the original, but you know what? I'll still give it a confused but respectful nod. Get at least a four quart saucepan and add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom of the pan. Heat over medium high till hotter than Kendrick doing a dance during golden hour. Wow. Then add half a pound or 250 grams of diced smoked ham and five hot dogs sliced into half inch coins. Whoa, buddy. Really in them horses. I made these hot dogs from scratch with my own two hands. So don't at me. Once those start to get some color, lower the heat to medium and stir in five cloves of finely chopped garlic, because I wrote it in the VO like that today. That's garlic, by the way. 
Once fragrant, about 30 seconds, add in a half cup or 120 grams of tomato paste. Cook and stir till that begins to caramelize in the bottom of the pan, about one minute, and then add in one and a half cups or 350 milliliters of chicken stock. Stir that in and follow that with a 24 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, a quarter cup or 24 grams of granulated sugar. And before you ask, I couldn't physically bring myself to add any more sugar than that. So many internal conflicts during this moment. Now bring that to a light boil, reduce the heat to low and simmer for 15 minutes or until reduced and slightly thickened to something like this. Now season that to taste with salt and that is your tomato sauce. Finally, onto our chicken. First off, this is my favorite thing about Jolly Bee. No god dang breasts. You know, I've always avoided the breast when it comes to fried chicken. And you know, Jolly Bee gets it. So get a large bowl and fill it with two cups or 480 milliliters of buttermilk, two teaspoons or five grams of garlic powder, one teaspoon or two grams of ground white pepper, one teaspoon or half a gram of ground coriander seeds. Begin whisking that and then add in two and a half tablespoons or 36 grams of a specifically silver swan soy sauce. And optionally, you can add a touch of MSG if you want to be a little bit naughty. Whisk all that together, add in four chicken drumsticks and four chicken thighs, all bone in and skin on for that juicy, moist flavor. Toss to coat and marinate for five minutes at room temp, but ideally let it sit overnight in the fridge. Then for the dredge, get a separate large bowl, add two cups or 375 grams of all-purpose flour, one and a half tablespoons or 14 grams of kosher salty, two teaspoons or 12 grams of MSG. One teaspoon or one gram of ground coriander seeds, two teaspoons or eight grams of garlic powder, one teaspoon or four grams of ground white pepper, a quarter teaspoon or one gram of onion powder. Give it a nice whisk to help you forget the last ingredient of one teaspoon or one gram of ground ginger powder. Stir again, and that is your dredge. Now, please listen carefully here. The way you coat your chicken is what makes this recipe. If your fried chicken sucks, it's probably for a lot of reasons, but a big one is the coating technique. I don't just release recipes like a bunch of these whack TikTok cooks. And don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about all of them, but I show real techniques and I'm giving them so you can wield their power so please use them. Now, in order to create appropriate flakage, you need to mimic what a chicken shop has a lot of drippage in their dredge. So dip your hand into your marinade and flick little dots of it onto your flour. Stir that in and repeat one to two more times and you should have tiny little balls dispersed in your flour that will flatten into a beautiful flake when you coat. Now pull your chicken from your marinade in batches, drop it into your flour mix, toss the coat, making sure to get your dredge underneath the skin as well. Press aggressively to adhere a nice layer on every little nook and cranny. And once it's fully coated with no bald spots, your chicken is coated. Remember, if it looks good dredged, it's going to look good fried. Repeat that with all your chicken. Gently lay your chicken into fry oil around 350 Fahrenheit and fry for 8 to 10 minutes, adjusting the temp to keep them from getting too hot. You want to cook before the crust gets too dark. Now, once flaky like a god dang croissant and the internal temperature reads 165 Fahrenheit and your poulet is done. Now for the spaghetti, well, please at least cook your spaghetti al dente in heavily salted boiling water and, well, you're ready to plate it up. Plate down. Followed by peschetti, the reddest tomato sauce in history, cheddar cheese to hurt my heart, a fried chicken thigh, and drumstick for that proper combo. And finally, your confit garlic soy gravy. Now that looks like a Jolly Bee plate if I've ever seen one, but it's time to decide a winner. And to be honest, I don't know how this is gonna go. Kendrick, this one's for you. I worked really hard on this. That kicked me right in the penis. And with the gravy. Mommy! We won. This is like the best piece of chicken we've made on this channel ever. We'll do the spaghetti, although I'm not really that crazed about it at this point. It's all right. Obviously, I prefer this one. It's a lot less sweet. There's more diversity in the texture of it. And the hot dog's obviously being homemade. I mean, come on. We have a taste tester today. This right here. Little baby wearing a Jolly Bee shirt. That's this man right here. My friend Dan the man. We go way back, worked in restaurants together. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with Jolly Bee? Jolly Bee for me was like we would go to church and then my mom would take me to Jolly Bee as like a thank you. My first birthday was a Jolly Bee. My mom was like holding me to the mascot and I was like, Meh. don't sting me. Damn, girl. this is really kinky. You ever had that happen before? Not standing up. <laughs> choo choo. Chicken number two. The first one, I really like the crunchiness of it. Anything crunchy, I'm sold on. The second one, I really like the pepperiness behind it. A good combination of that would be a really good Jalebi chicken, baby. One would be my pick. That's good. On to the spaghetti. Are they gonna take my Filipino card away, man? You're no longer brown. Yeah. Choo -choo. It's definitely the first one. The taste definitely like sticks to my mind. There's a bit of an acidity on the second spaghetti, which is a lot more mature. But the first one, I could definitely eat it and just like distinguish it from childhood. It's really familiar to me, so definitely the first one. You can put the flavor in the chicken, but you can't take away the culture and nostalgia. Honestly, I think this is one of my favorite competitions I've ever done on But Better. Jollibee honestly gets a gold star. First But Better in history that's ever gotten a gold star. It's a tie. We're gonna go hang this up together. And I wanna make another joke, but not with a baby in between us. But you wanna know what else is in between us? B-roll.